If you are an academic and you are still using ChatGBT to read, write and understand research papers, then just stop. In today's video, I'm going to be going through how to read, understand and take notes just like a PhD or just like an academic using AI. This method is easy, fast and efficient and there's really nothing complicated about it. And I've broken it down into a four step reading method. So let's start with step one. Now, the key thing when you're reading some material or any research paper is that you want to try to create a bit of a conversation conversation. So it needs to be quite dynamic. And that is when you understand the text the best. And when you're able to create kind of critical discussion points and things that you can write in your essays, in your literature review, or even in your thesis later. So step one is the 30 second read, and this is the fast read. Now a PhD student never reads papers from the beginning. I mean, the efficient PhD student never reads from the beginning. The first quick read can even take you just 30 seconds where you just skim through the paper. You're reading the introduction, you're reading the abstract, you're quickly looking at the keywords and the key results and discussion. However, instead of manually doing this, you can actually use AI tools like Anara. And Anara is an AI workspace for scientists, for students and for researchers, and it really helps you with understanding research papers, gathering information and interrogating text in a efficient and in an ethical way as someone who is in academia. So let's look at how you can quickly skim your text using Anara AI. So this is what the platform looks like when you first open it up. It's really user friendly. It's quite easy to navigate. And even if you've just opened up for the first time, it takes five to 10 minutes to figure out how to use it. So the key thing you want to do here is upload your own research papers to begin with. So something that you found that you want to try to understand um, in the first place. So I've already got a massive library. I've been using Anara for a couple of years now. I've got a massive library of texts that I have read, want to read, um, have kind of read. So I'm gonna pull one of those out. I've chosen the file that I'm interested in. You can also chat to a note that you've made in the past or a video that you've uploaded. You can really chat to anything. And I've said, can you summarize this paper and find kind of the key findings for me? And this is just going to take a couple of seconds and it will identify all the key findings, summarize what this paper is about and give me a good idea as to firstly, whether I do want to continue to read this paper and whether I think it will be valuable. But secondly, even if I've identified it as a valuable paper, it gives me that initial understanding that I need to then continue on with the context uh, that I have. So here I have like the key findings, uh, this whole paper is about biodiversity and climate change. So it's really kind of uh, filtered out what the key findings are in this 27 page research paper, which it's done in a couple of seconds, it would have taken me ages and ages to do. And then I've said, can you give me the top five keywords from this document? And as someone who's picking up this paper for the first time, I think it's really valuable to know what those keywords are to then be able to search for other literature uh, if you need to, to also just be able to understand what those keywords are and be able to relate to them. So, you know, these are good definitions that mean that you're not kind of like switching between tabs. You're not having to go to Google and search or, you know, ChatGPT or any other platform. You can get these definitions within the chat here in Anara. And then the other thing that I think is really cool that you can do is that you can highlight different parts of the text. And this is a relatively new feature that I really, really appreciate. So you can highlight different parts of the text um, and then either just highlight it or add comments. So a bit of annotations. And I find that um, this is quite a unique feature of Anara that other AI tools don't necessarily have. So it means that you're not only just asking the chat, but you're also able to apply that information into annotations that you can then come back to later on. So I really, really like this feature. So now that you've given the paper a quick read, step two is where you do some active interrogation. And this is where you're reading with a critical mind and you're questioning everything about the paper. You're constantly asking why, how, what if, and you're trying to like deconstruct the arguments that are given within the paper. And this is one of the main things um, that you want to aim towards when you're thinking like a PhD or when you're thinking about academia and research papers in general. So for this, we're just going to be asking a ton of questions and Anara is amazing at doing this. So one of the things I'm, I'm doing here, trying to go beyond the basic, and I've said, what is the difference between the methods used in this paper and the one in a different paper that I read previously? So this is really good because it's interrogating the paper beyond just what I see at face value. And it's looking through uh, the different method and comparison. And I think this is such a, it's one thing I like about the chats, the Anara chats is that it uses language that's 
quite easy to understand and digest. So it's even though it's still technical and it's still, you know, high level thinking, I can very easily understand this without knowing much about the topic, which I really appreciate. So it's created this really useful table for me, which I can copy and paste into somewhere else that I want to kind of start writing. It's also given me an in-depth explanation um, into the two papers and explained why they did this and why the other paper did that and why how they evaluated the the results and and how they synthesized etc and I, I just think it's such a nice way to uh, really interrogate a paper go into a lot more depth and then what you can do is if you want to now try to interrogate certain sections further which I again really recommend um, you can highlight that section and you can chat to or about a specific section so I've said explain how this so they've mentioned something in the introduction I've said explain how this interferes with climate change and the environmental impact I'm not talking about the whole paper now I want to kind of dig a little bit deeper into a few of the statements that they've presented. Because what's, what I can do now is I can use this to create arguments in my lit review, you know, in my critical discussion, or even just try and find gaps in literature through uh, these kind of discussions. And this is what kind of takes you to that next higher level. The third step is smart annotation and note taking. So when you're a PhD student, you are notorious for highlighting, for making notes, for uh, scribbling, just having like things written all over the place. When I did my PhD, there was an AI. So I was, I had notebooks full of notes and annotations and just things written everywhere. But now you can obviously use something like Anara and you can annotate and take notes and add citations and everything can be quite neat and in one place. So you can very easily uh, take anything from the chat and add it to a note. So this creates a, a, a note where you can edit, make changes, add citations, uh, keep on adding to the notes. You can add links to the notes. You can create quotes from things that you've read. It just allows you to have more control over what you're reading. So you're not just getting asking information from Anara, taking that information and just reading it, but actually you're adding to a pot of information um, and a kind of note that you've written yourself independently. I can even go to my library and when I go to the library, I can see all the different file types. So all of my notes are available, the ones I've written in the past. I can see my chats, I can see my documents. Um, and so I can also open a brand new note from the homepage as well and just start writing a blank note uh, too. And then the cool thing that you can do is you can actually add citations or search for citations as you're writing. So here, for example, I have a sentence that I've written, um, but I want to cite this sentence. So I can either find citations online, so that's finding citations from an external library, not from my personal library, and then I can add them into my library and I can cite them. And this is really useful because it's kind of a bit like, like you're searching for research papers that are relevant to the statement that you've made or the sentence that you've written. Uh, or I can search through my library and look at the notes that I've taken and I can start to kind of link things together. So I can start to pull evidence from the notes that I have, from the papers that I've read, from the internet, and I'm now bringing all this, all of these sources together to have a powerful note that I can then take and begin writing or kind of have a good introduction for something that I'm about to kind of understand. The last step, uh, step four, is the knowledge synthesis. So this is the PhD superpower. This is the most crucial but difficult step. You're synthesizing information to build a literature review, for example, and this is where you bring everything together. So what I've showed you so far is one research paper, but you'll do that for maybe 15 or 20 research papers and then you want to bring that all together to create a powerful outline from which you can write something that you will put in a research paper or you'll put in your thesis or is something that you're a literature review for your examination university etc so this is where you're kind of really bringing all those key insights together. One of the ways that I would like to do this using Anara is to create groups and folders of papers. Um, it's, it's great and, and you know it's really useful to look at individual papers, but a lot of the time comparing uh, sources is really powerful and is what is how you get that kind of higher level when you're writing academically. Then you can chat to that folder. So I can 
ask any question uh, only about the papers in this folder, which means I have so much more control over the information sources and where information is coming from. So here I've said identify the common themes and contradictions from these files in the folder. I don't want it to look at other papers or anything else that I have in my library or anything online. So this would have taken me I don't know, days, weeks possibly. And it's given me kind of contradictions, uh, compared and contrasted different aspects of the topics. And whilst obviously this is an in-depth review, I can go into more detail. It's a very, very good way to start to begin to build that literature review or the outline that you need to bring everything together. Then the last thing I want to do is I want to say, based only on this folder of papers, create a bullet point outline for a literature review. So now I've done everything, I've done all my reading, I'm at the last stage before I come to write and you know I've essentially done this in a tenth of the time. It's now going to create an outline for me um, that gives me a, a good summary of everything that I should really include. Um, it's quite comprehensive as well. So I have the introduction, I, I have mechanisms, um, community, ecosystem, I have case studies that I should really write about. I've highlighted the conclusion and I'm then going to just speak about those three uh, points. I want to find some strong papers that I can reference within this conclusion part and I use that conclusion as the selection for where I want these you know sources to come from and then it's given me a primary recommendation the most fitting paper <laughs> which I, especially for points b and c it directly analyzes the gap and then it's given me some other alternative recommendations which it thinks that could also be useful now this is like it honestly just changes the game and, and like every single time i've been using ai for years now but every single time i use tools like anara i really think that resources like this allow us to be better scientists allow us to be better academics better students better researchers it gives us the power to spend more time doing the things that are important and it gives us the, the power to quickly and more efficiently run through read papers analyze data um you know, understand things a lot quicker. I've mentioned Anara quite a few times on my channel. So if you do want to try it out, I'll leave the link for it down below in my description, along with a discount code as well that you can use. But if you have tried it before, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Anara, have tried it. Let me know down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts about things that you think um, have worked really well with you or kind of the ways that you use it. I would absolutely love to hear from you because it just means that, you know, the videos that I make you guys are finding useful and the tools that I recommend can actually make a difference to your day-to-day -day life. So, so I'd love to hear from you. And like I said, don't forget to click on the description down below and I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye.